We'll start with one of my very favorite California native shrubs. This is hollyleaf cherry, Prunus alyssifolia, and this is a plant that I believe can be in almost any native garden somewhere. Prunus alyssifolia is a very tough local native shrub that can take everything from full blasting sun with reflected heat to a significant amount of shade and this is one that I have seen both in urban landscapes as well as in wild situations surviving in some of the toughest conditions. Any plant that's planted on freeway embankments by Caltrans and still thrives is one to really consider. And this is one that has some beautiful specimens on the 5710 freeway interchange that just love life even there. And the way it stays beautifully evergreen all throughout the year is by having a thick leathery leaf with a waxy cuticle that holds the water in so it doesn't need to go through that summer dormant cycle. In addition to being a beautiful green backdrop, hollyleaf cherry is actually one of the very top habitat plants we could plant in our gardens from supporting pollinators with its spring blooms. Its leaves are a very important larval food source for multiple species of butterflies, and it develops these beautiful cherries in the summer, which are important food sources for many different native songbirds. This is a plant that truly does a lot. This one here was planted about four years ago from a one gallon size, very small plant. And so you can see it does grow pretty quickly. This is not full grown. If you read about hollyleaf cherry, you will read that they might be like three to 30 feet tall. And that's because there's some very large old growth ones out in some wild areas. You are typically not going to see anything close to that in a built landscape. Thinking unpruned, maybe eight to 12-ish feet would be a typical sort of situation, but it is very easy to prune. I have a few of these in a hedge in my front yard at home, and I just do a little bit of pruning a couple of times a year with a hand pruner and keep them about five to six feet wide, let them get a little taller. I have even seen these things as a formerly sheared hedge, and they take quite well to that as well. As they grow taller, if you want to remove some of the lower limbs to sort of turn them into the look of a small tree and open up the base some, you can do that as well. This is a plant for many, many situations. Shrub for the north side of a building that's shady a lot of the year and then really bright and hot and exposed in the summer. Great choice. Using them as hedges or evergreen backdrops for gardens that have a lot of more dormant or semi-dormant summer plants in the front is a great option as well. Hollyleaf cherry, can't recommend it enough. Our next plant is a very close relative of hollyleaf cherry. This is Catalina island cherry, sometimes just called Catalina cherry, Prunus alyssifolia, subspecies lioni. So it's the same species as hollyleaf cherry, but a subspecies that grows on the Channel Islands. And essentially you can think of this horticulturally as Everything I just said about hollyleaf cherry, just in a plant that's going to grow faster and get quite a bit taller. You can see the leaves are slightly different, although similar. Uh, they're much less toothed, they're smoother. They're a little bit sort of lighter green and glossier looking, but the main difference in why you would plant this is if you want a taller plant. This will reliably get 20 to 25 feet tall in the landscape with being maybe around 10 feet wide. And so for a evergreen native columnar shaped plant, this is really probably our top choice, especially for hot inland areas. It is one where if you want a native replacement for where some people would have formerly planted like Italian cypress and not wanted to deal with all of the mess and the dryness and the fire hazard of this, this would be a great choice. They make great tall hedges that are very, very low maintenance. If you want to use these as a tall backdrop hedge, I recommend planting them about seven feet apart. I have have a small hedge of three of these planted seven feet apart at my house to provide a little bit more privacy between me and one of my neighbors. And it works so, so well, is often full of birds. The cherries are just as much of a draw for the native songbirds, uh, also a butterfly larval host plant. Really, really great plant if you have the space of it. One quick note about both of these cherry species, the fruit does look like the same kind of cherry that we would get at a farmer's market or the supermarket. However, there's just really a 
thin layer of the fleshy part and a large pit. That makes it great as a landscape plant because it doesn't tend to attract all of the pests and insects that rotting kind of typical cherries would. If they fall off the tree in a landscape, they sort of just dry out and become part of the mulch. But because their pit is so large, if those cherries are falling onto concrete or a sidewalk, they could be a tripping hazard for someone if they step on it and their foot kind of rolls. So make sure that if there is going to be fruit drop, you're putting it somewhere where it's just going to fall into the mulch, or if it's falling on a patio or something like that, be prepared to sweep it off every once in a while to make sure everything stays safe.